Hi there, my name is Greg Snell with UAV Coach. I work primarily here as a videographer and a content editor. However, I've also been flying drones professionally for the last five years, and this one is totally new to me. So in this video, we're gonna introduce the SkyDio 2. Also, this is the first video in a five-part series where we begin to explore the SkyDio 2. So be sure to check out those other videos linked in the description. Now here in our first video specifically, we are gonna cover an introduction to SkyDio as a company, as well as a full setup to the SkyDio 2 and an app walkthrough for beginners. Let's get started. All right, so here we have it, the SkyDio 2, the drone that follows you and flies itself. Our team here at UAV Coach is super excited to finally get our hands on this model and begin making some videos sharing with you our thoughts and opinions on this incredible drone. Now, full disclosure here, our team at UAV Coach has purchased this drone specifically to make this five-part video series. SkyDio as a company does not know that we're producing these videos, nor do they have any oversight on the content. We are simply sharing our professional opinions independently and objectively. Now, the main reason that we decided to buy this model is because a number of our UAV Coach students have been asking for a viable alternative to DJI, and SkyDio as a company has been getting a ton of hype lately. So before we dig into this exact model, let's begin with SkyDio as a company and what they're all about. Skydio is a US-based company which back in 2020 raised a multi-million dollar war chest to further accelerate its product development and global sales. This supports the rapidly growing demand for its autonomous drone systems. They have multiple different models of drones and are really pushing the limits with what's possible in their R&D. Skydio's mission is to make the world more productive, creative, and safe with autonomous flight. And as we stated earlier, this is the drone that follows you and flies itself. And that is a pretty awesome tagline. Skydio drones are currently being used in many different industries. For example, they're being used in construction companies, by departments of transportation, energy utilities, and even police departments. Skydio drones are used to do things like infrastructure inspection, search and rescue, situational awareness, and even emergency response. So let's jump into their most popular consumer model, the SkyDio 2. So here we have it, the SkyDio 2. And before we get this thing up in the air, let's talk about what's in the box. The SkyDio 2 base package comes with a sweet carrying case, which you'll need, and we'll have more on that later. It also comes with the drone itself, a battery, two sets of extra props, and a charger plus a charging cable. It's charged, updated, and you can even transfer data by any old USB-C cable, which is very handy. Sold separately from what you see here is a remote controller and a beacon, both of which can assist your flying experience. However, with this base package starter kit, what you see here is what you get. Now this may be a little bit confusing because by not having a controller in your base package, this is very uncharacteristic of how most other drone companies would package their systems. However, it is the drone that autonomously flies itself. So what you see here in this base package is all you need, except for two things. You will need a smartphone to be able to power up the app to control the drone. And also you'll need a fast enough micro SD card to copy or read the data that you're recording. And we'll touch more on that later in this video. The drone itself feels really well made. It's light and yet rigid and has no folding arms. Now this definitely makes it a bit harder to pack and carry, but the reason is to ensure that the autonomy system works properly. And one of the reasons that SkyDio is so popular is because of their obstacle avoidance system. So all six of these cameras must be aligned to accurately build a 3D map around the drone as it flies in real time. As for the six cameras, there are three on the top of the drone and three three on the bottom. Each camera has a super wide 200 degree field of view and a 4K sensor built inside. These cameras are the eyes of some incredibly intelligent tech, and you should try to avoid scratching or damaging the lenses to make sure that the autonomy system doesn't get confused or falter. Hence this sweet carrying case and why you should probably use it when storing or traveling with the drone. Now the battery itself actually clips onto the drone via a very strong and powerful magnet. And this is incredible. Listen to this. So satisfying. I absolutely wish DJI had this function. 
Charging the battery is possible via the USB-C port on top of the drone and the USB-C cable included in your base package or any old USB-C cable that you may have lying around your house. Now keep in mind that the battery must be attached to the drone in order to charge, and I could definitely see this being a problem in the future, especially if you're on location and you're wanting to fly, but you have to wait for batteries to charge in the background. However, Skydio does offer a dual battery charging dock, and that is capable of simultaneously charging two batteries at once. Now underneath the battery here is the spot for your micro SD card, and something interesting that I found out right away and I found it out the hard way, is that you must have a micro SD card which is fast enough to write the speed of the data that you're recording from the drone. For example, I have a 128 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra card, which I use for my GoPro Hero 8. Now it seems to be fine when recording 4K on the GoPro, however, when installed into the Skydio 2, it doesn't allow me to take off. It says that the micro SD card is too slow and therefore I can't even fly. Now luckily I do have another micro SD card which I use for my Mavic 2 Pro and that is the SanDisk 128 gigabyte extreme card and this is fast enough to be able to fly the Skydio 2 when installed into the drone. So essentially if you want to be able to capture the high quality video and photos that this drone is able to record then you must have a compatible micro SD card and without it you can't even fly. So that and the cell phone are the two things that you absolutely must have to be able to fly this that are not included in the base package starter kit. All right, so now that we have the battery fully charged and the drone is ready to go, let's download the Skydio app. Once you've got the app downloaded on your phone, make sure that you have the drone nearby and then open the app to begin this process. First things first is to tap on the get started button. Once you've done this, you'll want to scroll down through the provided information, completing a couple of necessary steps in order to access the drone. This includes verifying your email address and some other necessary information. Once all of this is set, you'll need to connect your drone to the app on your phone. You do this by entering your unique Skydio 2 Wi-Fi information. Now this information is provided as a sticker on the drone itself and also can be found underneath the battery on your Skydio 2. Now you'll only need to do this once because once you've entered your unique Wi-Fi information, the app will save it so that every time you open the app, you can quick connect to your drone. All right, so once the app and your phone are connected to your drone, you wanna hold the button on the battery for a solid three seconds until the LED lights on the drone are a solid blue color. Then you select connect. You may need to update the software before being able to operate your Skydio 2. Once all is set, you should be ready to fly with a big blue begin flight button on the homepage of the app. But before you get this bad boy up into the sky, let's go over a complete walkthrough of the Skydio app. You'll notice right away that the app is very intuitive and easy to use. At the top of the screen, you have four icons providing certain information. At the bottom, you have three icons, one of which is the media tab, the fly tab, and the info tab. The media tab at the bottom left allows you to sort through and even edit your recorded clips when you're connected to the drone. You can also save screenshots from video frames, which is pretty cool. In the center, the fly tab is pretty self-explanatory and you'll want to be on that tab when you're ready to fly. Then finally, in the bottom right is the info tab, and that gives you a lot of additional important information, such as external resources, audio recording settings, metric or imperial settings, cell phone update data sizes, and overall support options, plus even flight logs. Looking back at the main home screen of the app, we've got four icons at the top, and the top left icon is a gear icon, and this gives you two options for controls. First is the drone, and then the phone. Under drone, your first option is the height limits. Here you have the ability to enable or disable the height floor, as well as the height ceiling. First, let's talk about the height floor. When enabled, this feature makes sure that the drone cannot fly below 2.4 meters or 8 feet from the ground. This is essentially a built-in safety measure to avoid collisions with any unexpected passers-by. You can also disable this at the press of a button, but when disabled, you want to fly with caution. Next, you have control over the height ceiling, and this is where you can manually set the max height to which your drone can fly. The default here is 122 meters or 400 feet. We would suggest that you keep within these limits. When flying above this altitude, you do so at your own risk as well as the risk of other aerial vehicles. 
The next option under the drone tab is the return behavior. This is where you'll find your RTH or return to home settings. Under return behavior, you have the ability to set and or change the RTH height, the height behavior, the direction in which the drone is facing upon return, and the return speed. You also have the option to change what action the drone takes when the connection with the phone has been lost. Going back to the gear icon, it also gives you control over some of the phone's functions. The first option is the app controls such as slide, steering, and dual sticks. Plus then you have your dual sticks mode and three different dual stick mode options. The default is set to mode two, which if I'm correct, is also the default dual stick mode for DJI and what most of us are already used to anyways. Finally, you then have the option to enable or disable the on-screen telemetry display. Next to the gear icon is the 4K video icon, which allows you to control the recording and photo aspects of the Skydio 2. Now, as a videographer and photographer myself, I absolutely love having control over the photo and video settings. First off, this drone can record at 4K or in HD. So let's start with the 4K. In 4K, it can record at 24, 30, 48, and 60 frames per second. The max resolution and frame rate is 4K 60, and this is a great option because 4K is a high enough resolution to be able to provide some absolutely stunning footage, and 60 FPS gives you the ability to create some beautiful slow motion clips. So for example, recording at 60 frames per second and then dropping that into your editing timeline of say 24 or 30 FPS allows you to slow down that footage by half, giving you a 50% smooth as butter slow motion look. When in HD, you can also record up to 120 frames per second for even slower footage. This would create a wicked 25% slow motion look, which is especially cool when you're recording really fast moving objects. You can also record high dynamic range footage at the 4K options of 30, 48, and 60 FPS. However, the high dynamic range recording option is not available in your normal high definition or HD, and it's also not available in 4K24. I personally have no idea why that is. It seems strange that HDR footage is available in 4K30, 48, and 60, but not in any of the HD modes or in 4K24. So if you know the answer to that, put it in the comments below. Next is the option to auto record on takeoff or to manually record when within the app. Finally, you have two options for video codecs or compression. These are AVC or advanced video compression, which is also known as H.264. And then you also have HEVC or high efficiency video compression, which is also known as H.265. Now these numbers can get a little bit confusing, but essentially these are two video codecs that help compress the footage that you're recording in real time. This is important when talking about file sizes and the ability to edit your footage in post. H.264 are larger file sizes, but they're usually easier to edit with less powerful computers. H.265 are smaller file sizes, but it's more taxing on your editing equipment. You'll just have to test out each one for yourself to see which works best for your data storage and editing process. You can also then control some of the exposure settings such as the white balance, shutter speed, ISO, and exposure compensation all of which I'm gonna leave on auto for our first flight. At the top of the 4K video settings is also a small camera icon. When selected, this opens up your photo settings. Here you can choose between a timer setting of two, five, or 10 seconds, as well as a JPEG or DNG raw image. I would suggest photographing in the DNG or the raw file format because this will save the most amount of dynamic range and color data onto your SD card and make it a lot easier to edit these photos in post. However, when shooting with the JPEGs, you do get the option of an HDR image. So it's really up to you as to what you want and what you like best. You can also then control the exposure settings of the camera, just like in video mode. Next to the 4K video icon at the top is the Wi-Fi icon, which shows you how strong the signal is between your phone and the drone. It's important to monitor this information during the flight because you'll want to know what the max distance is that you'll be able to fly the drone before losing connection with your phone. Then finally, in the top right corner of the app home screen, you have the battery icon for the drone, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now there is a lot more information regarding the app once we're actually up in the air and flying the drone. However, with this beginner walkthrough, the settings that I've just gone over are the most important to understand for right now.
In the next video, we will dive deeper into the app while actually flying the drone and cover the specific Skydio autonomous flight skills, the cinematic one shots, and its multiple different motion tracking modes. Definitely a huge highlight of this drone is its ability to avoid obstacles while tracking moving subjects, all the while recording 4K resolution at 60 FPS. I mean, come on, that is incredible. All right, so now that we're all set up, it is time to get the Skydio up in the air and what better place to do it than a tree-lined pathway. So I hope this will be a very good place to test that obstacle avoidance and wrap this video. So without further ado, it's time to fly. Testing one, two. All right, and here we are up in the air with the Skydio 2. Now I am subject tracking myself via the app on the phone and no other way am I controlling the drone. And I've got a lab mic hooked up here with a dead cat on it. So hopefully we can't hear too much of that background noise from the drone, but still I wanted to try and get this up in the air to wrap this video because it is a very good example of how well it does motion tracking me in this kind of tight-ish tree tunnel situation. Now, what we covered in this video is a brief introduction to Skydio as a company, which is very interesting. If you want to learn more about this US-based company, be sure to check out their website and some of the news and press releases that they have there. We also went over the full kit and what comes with that basic starter kit and how the drone is sort of built and what it's like. And I will say it is very well built and it's nice to see uh, such a basic starter kit. However, I was still a little bit surprised to not have the controller, but here we are testing if we really even need it. And then finally, we did an app walkthrough for beginners where we cover all the most important information here on the app uh, before you get up in the air. But now that we're up in the air, there is a lot more that this app can do, including the specific Skydio skills, some cinematic one shots, and a lot more about the motion and subject tracking, which with this drone is pretty incredible. So uh, be sure to check out our other four videos as part of this five part video series with UAV Coach. And from everybody here on our team, we're wishing you blue skies and safe flying.